Hello and welcome to the Ecosystem Restoration Unit Launch video. My name is Ryan and I'm a fifth grade science teacher in Camden, New Jersey. I'm excited to be previewing this unit with you. Before we begin, please make sure you've read and notated the unit overview, unit of glance and standards, you've read and notated the science background knowledge document, and finally, you've printed out the unit internalization guide and have a pencil ready. If you're new to these items, please press pause now. In the Ecosystem Restoration Unit, the big unit question that students are tackling is why aren't the jaguars and sloths and the reforested part of the Costa Rican rainforest ecosystem growing and thriving? Well, here's the background. Students will be ecologists in this unit, and they'll partner with the Natural Resources Rescue to help interpret data that's been collected. The area that's the project site used to be a cow farm. The trees have been cut down to allow it to be used for cattle and grazing. The Natural Resources Rescue has worked to help make sure that this area is replanted and can return to being a rainforest. What students will discover through ideas and data provided by Natural Resources Rescue is that the jaguars and sloths in particular are not doing so well. There's not as many and there's some other issues along the way. So in this unit, students will try to figure out what's happening to the jaguars and sloths in this reforested part of the rainforest ecosystem. You can press pause to fill out your unit internalization guide now. As far as why does this unit matter, you probably have heard of all the different species that are facing extinction or already extinct. Hundreds of plants have been wiped out in the last 250 years, and according to a recent UN study, one million species now face extinction. As far as with Costa Rica, animals like sloths and jaguars also face serious consequences. These animals might not exist in those areas for much longer. So the work that your students do in understanding how we can restore and protect ecosystems has huge impacts for one, possibly going to careers as ecologists or biologists, or two, being informed citizens that can help protect our planet. Let's dive into some chapter overviews. The chapter one question is why aren't the jaguars and sloths growing and thriving? Now I'm going to go through each of the different lessons and highlight one small part that Amplify does to help our students understand why the jaguars and sloths aren't growing and thriving. Students explore the sim and start to discover and notice energy flow and matter transfer in the first lesson, 1.1. In lesson 1.2, students learn about the Costa Rican Rainforest Restoration Project and their role as ecologists. They also set up terrariums to serve as models of an ecosystem which they'll analyze and study throughout this entire unit and with each progress build. And in lesson 1.3, students read a book called Made of Matter to discover that organisms are made of molecules, that all living things are made of matter. In lesson 1.4, students learn about how scientific arguments include a claim that is supported with evidence, which could be ideas or data. This is hugely important as students with each chapter task of the three chapters will have a chance to make a claim and support it with evidence. In Lesson 1.4, students use a video of otters and cubes as models to generate a claim of how organisms grow their bodies. They discover that animals get their food molecules by eating, and the food molecules may become part of their bodies. In Lesson 1.5, students use this sim and other resources to synthesize that animals use food molecules for energy and to grow. And in Lesson 1.6, students start to take this understanding of how organisms use those food molecules and apply it to food web. In lesson 1.7, students then practice modeling food webs and use food webs to consider what would happen if we remove plants. And finally, the last part of this chapter is the chapter one task in lesson 1.8. In this lesson, students use evidence cards, five evidence cards to examine ideas and data to construct and support the response to the chapter one question about why the jaguars and sloths aren't growing and thriving. The progress build states, the food matter that animals need to grow and use for energy can always be traced back to plants. At this point, you should have printed or be able to pull up the chapter one focus task assessment. Before you take a chance to pause this video and solve it, I wanna highlight that there are five evidence card included that students will be able to use to support their claims. So they'll make a claim to answer the chapter question using the evidence cards to support their answer and finally, there are two additional questions to assess their mastery. Go ahead and press pause to solve this performance task. Great, 
you can see that there's a rubric for evaluating students' arguments. And there's also an exemplar. So in summary, Progress Build 1 makes sure that students understand that food matter is traced back to plants, and that's what animals depend on. In Chapter 2, students investigate why the cecropia trees aren't growing and thriving. Again, thinking back to Chapter 1 and its importance of plants, it makes a lot of sense. In Lesson 2.1, students use the sim and examine their terrariums again to discover that plants need water, carbon dioxide, and sunlight to grow and thrive. In Lesson 2.2, students read the textbook Energy Makes It All Go to discover that the two forms of matter that plants need to make their food, water and carbon dioxide, require the sun's energy to be changed into food matter. In Lesson 2.3, students use the leaves and roots game to simulate photosynthesis and create a digital model of their learnings. This continues with Lesson 2.4, where students use what they've learned and return to the sim to find evidence to choose between two claims. One, that energy and ecosystem originates with plants, and the second, that energy and ecosystem comes from the sun. In Lesson 2.5, students read the text Restoration Case Studies, zooming in on the impact of wolves within Yellowstone, with a focus on how human actions can have impacts on ecosystems and methods of restoration. Next, in Lesson 2.6, students read Why Do Students Argue? Learning about Rachel Carson and the importance of using evidence, both ideas and data, to convince others. In Lesson 2.7a, students answer, answer the Chapter 2 question about why Cecropia trees aren't growing and thriving. They return to the Evidence Circle format, and they're given five evidence cards to construct and support their response to that question. The cards this time feature information on weather as well, including carbon dioxide, total rainfall, and sunny days over a week's time. Lesson 2.7b is a master teacher suggested additional lesson, which accounts for observable feature three of standard 5LS21, which features the impact of an introduced species on the balance within an ecosystem. Finally, the critical juncture assessment allows students to show off their mastery of PB1 and PB2 content you've been working throughout this entire unit to make sure they understand and are ready to thrive on this assessment. Progress Build 2 states that energy from the sun is brought into an ecosystem when plants make food by using water molecules, carbon dioxide from the air, and energy from the sun. In the Chapter 2 Focused Task Assessment, students will answer the question about why the Cecropia trees aren't growing and thriving using the evidence cards. You should go ahead and pause so you can solve this question on your own. Then press play. As the Focused Task rubric shows, students will be scored based on their argument and their evidence and citations just like before. One thing to highlight that I didn't focus on in chapter one is that a huge part of this is citing your evidence. So students should be using and taught to say things, write things like, in evidence card three, we saw that or we read that. Chapter two focus task exemplar. You'll see as you review this that there are two claims students can make, but both involve not getting enough water because we saw that there's not as much rainfall by a significant amount in the project site. The first claim they could make is saying there's not enough water, or they alternatively could say there's not enough water and also mention that the data shows there's one less sunny day. Either are exemplar answers. Again, Progress Build 2 gets the idea that the sun's energy is used by plants with the water molecules and carbon dioxide molecules to make their food, and that they need all three things in order to grow and thrive. This leads to the chapter three question. Why are the scorpia trees growing and thriving in the soil? In chapter, or in lesson 3.1, we go back to chapter two, where students examine data from seven days and they really decided there's a problem most likely with the rain. Well, in lesson 3.1, students examine data from an entire month and discover that their claims must change due to the fact that it's a longer time period of evidence. They examine new evidence about soil and compare two soil samples to begin considering what makes soil and its matter different in different places. Students also re-examine their terrariums. In Lesson 3.2, scientists read the text, Walk in the Woods to discover about decomposers and their role in the soil and ecosystems. And they begin to think about how decomposers could possibly make soil different in different places. In Lesson 3.3, students use this sim and synthesize what they've learned in the text 
walk in the woods to investigate what decomposers do with the matter they break down, what happens to nutrients. In Lesson 3.4, students are inspired by an update from the Natural Resources Rescue to examine, through the sim, how nutrients help plants grow. They discover that without nutrients in the soil, plants make food and add to their body matter much more slowly than plants in nutrient-rich soil. In Lesson 3.5, students return to the re Restoration Case Studies text and zero in on Restoration Case Studies in which part of the Restoration Plan was to add decomposers to return nutrients to the soil. And then, in Lesson 3.6, students use their evidence cards to examine ideas and data from five evidence cards to construct and support their response to the Chapter 3 question. Students next will take the end-of-unit assessment. In Progress Build 3, students discover that decomposers consume dead matter and release nutrients that plants use to help them make food molecules. As you look at the Chapter 3 task, they're answering this question about why Zacropia trees aren't growing and thriving in the soil. Again, they're supplied with evidence cards, this time six, that hopefully will help them realize that it is about the nutrients due to decomposers' presence. Again, you can see the rubric and now the exemplar are included. And in this, students should really discover that there's fewer decomposers and that's affected the nutrient levels, which means the plants cannot grow and thrive nearly as fast since they can't make their food as quickly. The third progress bill gets the idea that decomposers are needed in ecosystem so that the soil will have enough nutrients, which plants need to be able to make their food faster and grow and thrive. Now we'll zoom in on three questions for the end unit assessment before you take the entire thing so we can connect it to the progress builds. This first question is about a scenario of student curiosity when reading a book, Trout Made from Trees. Go ahead and press pause so you can read over this question. A utopian exemplar answer to this question would include information that the trout gets molecules not directly from the tree, but the trout eats molecules from the aquatic insects, which ate the leaves, so the molecules were passed on. This connects to the progress build one, which states that animals need to grow and use energy, and it's always traced back to plants. The next question is the progress build two question. This is a scenario about two students who are growing potted plants in their classroom. Go to press pause so you can read over it and it's decide on your answer. For this question, students discover that a lack of water caused Sammy's plant to grow less. This connects to Progress Build 2 because Progress Build 2 is all about the idea that plants need water molecules and carbon dioxide molecules in order to make their food in combination with the energy from the sun. For Progress Build 3, students will read a scenario about two students placing seeds in plastic bags. Go ahead and take a minute to read over the question and solve it. The answer to, utopian answer to this question has two parts. First, students should describe the nutrients from the old leaves support plant growth. And secondly, they should be including complete sentences of capital letters. This connects to progress build three because that's the idea that nutrients are needed in soil for plants to be able to grow and make their own food faster and that these nutrients come from decomposers. Finally, constructed response example. In question 10, students would have answered why they think the pot of plants have different results of growth. For question 11, students will be able to list two pieces of evidence from the reading passage or possible source of evidence page that supports this claim. You can see the criteria for success and go ahead and press pause to read over this question. For the exemplar, it breaks it down to three points. Two points for pieces of evidence and finally, one point for complete sentences with capital letters. You can also pause to read the exemplar student response. Thank you teachers for previewing this unit with me. I hope you found this video helpful. It's exciting to think that our students are now more informed about ecosystems and how we can work to help species and save our wildlife, and also to restore ecosystems that are in threat. As far as the final steps for KIPP teachers, make sure to finish taking the entire end of unit test. Complete your unit internalization guide. Be sure to submit the unit Google form on kipst.org Calendar out your unit, prepare vocabulary and anchor charts, organize your kit and materials, and start prepping and rehearsing your lessons. Definitely be sure to check out those terrariums and start thinking about where you'll place them in your classroom. Enjoy this unit, and thank you.